Hey guys, my name is Jaleesa Vaughn and this is my changed moment. Who was I before I met Jesus? Um, what an odd question. I mean, my first answer, uh, I mean, my first answer would be nothing, no one, lost. Um, and even though I was born and raised in the church, church two, three times a week, choir rehearsal, on the praise team, um, everything. I mean, and it still just really wasn't enough. I mean, I didn't really get to know him until I, I moved away to college. I think I actually talked about it in one of my blog posts. Um, you know, when you grow up in the church, it's just routine. To having parents that are preachers and, and grandparents that are pastors, uh, it, it's somewhat work. Uh, and you don't really take the time to build your own relationship with God. And I think it's because you just always trust them to go to God for you, um, as we would say. Uh, you don't think that you need to, you know, pray for yourself. Or... And don't get me wrong, I mean, that's good up until a certain age. I think after we reach, reach a certain age, God is, you know, asking us, where are you? And now he starts to listen for us. And, and I think when I got to college, I realized that because you're not under the covering of your family or under the covering of being at home. You know, you're you're out there with people of all different faiths, all different beliefs, and you have to learn how to stand on your own. And, and that's what forced my relationship with God. And kind of he pulled me aside um, and was like, listen, it's you and me now. When did I realize that I needed Jesus? Um, I think I've always known that I've needed him. Um, it just, I think the question for me is when did you realize that the only way that you could get to him was to go to him for yourself? Um, it was kind of the, just the feeling that something is missing and, and you really don't know what it is, but you know for a fact that something is missing. And you know, you try to do so much to try to block out that feeling or that, or that thought, um, but nothing was working. Um, so I think that's, and I think I was trying to do so much to block out that feeling or the thought, um, and it wasn't working. So I realized that I needed him. And I also think it's the fact that, um, you meet so many different people of different faiths and then they start to question yours and you really don't know. And it's not that you don't know what you believe because you know what you believe and who you believe in. Um, it's just the fact that you can't back it up as much as they can back theirs up. And I think that's where I started getting more and more convicted um, and seeking God on my own saying, you know, this is what I believe and I know that, but I need you to help me understand and help me study your words so that when people do come to try to taint my faith, um, I'm able to come back at them and oh, say, this no. is my God, and this is what I know he can do. Um, this is what he's brought me through, and this is what I've learned in, in, in my Bible. Um, How did I commit myself to God? Um, for me, that question is pretty simple. I mean, I allowed him full reign over my life. And even though I am the absolute furthest thing from perfect, um, I will never let my imperfections keep me away from him. And I think that that's one of the things that the enemy kind of uses to, to keep us away from God, uh, making us feel guilty or convicting us about things. Um, when, when all God is really trying to say is, you know, give me some type of effort. You know, if you fall, you get up and you try again the next day. Um, and I think that that's how, and I think that that's one of the things that has kept me on my walk. I mean, knowing that I'm a work in progress and not being, you know, misled or he only requires a little bit of us, um, initially at least, um, in order to just, you know, do a work in us. He doesn't require us to change overnight. And I've also learned that, you know, if we just seek him first, uh, my favorite scripture is Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything, everything else will be added unto you. I mean, I think it's pretty simple. He's been pretty much just saying, you know, put me first and I'll do the rest. And I think that that is what, is what has kept me um, throughout life. I mean, if I just include him in all of my plans, include him in everything I do, he got me. What was the change that God made in my life? Um, I mean, he's showed me myself. I think that's the There's best the thing. good, the bad, the ugly, um, what I need to change, what I need to, you know, bring out more, um, and what he wants to do in me. And he's made it so that I can solely depend on him. I mean, there's no other option outside of him in my life. Um, and I've accepted that. And I think also throughout all of my experiences in life, God has eliminated all options outside of him. Um, he has shown me 